This is the Scoop for Thursday. I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines. Governor Ron DeSantis yesterday signed a controversial bill designed to prevent houseless people from sleeping in public places. The bill will prevent cities and counties from allowing people to sleep on public property, including at public buildings and in public rights of way. It would allow local governments to designate certain property for sleeping or camping if the sites meet standards set by the Florida Department of Children and Families. State Representative Sam Garrison sponsored the legislation. We are going to protect and fight for our public spaces, our parks, our libraries, the sidewalks we walk down. These things are worth fighting for because if you lose them, you lose something much more important. Democratic Representative Ana Escamani from Orlando said the measure, quote, targets individuals who are homeless and creates a scenario for local governments where the only option, if they can't meet the demands of the legislature, is to potentially criminalize homelessness. So not only are we not offering clear solutions, we're actually making a bad situation worse and not helping people get out of that economic instability that they're facing, unquote. The Florida legislative session ended March 8th. WMNS Chris Young reports that sustainability advocacy group 1000 Friends of Florida recapped what they feel are the wins and losses of the session during a presentation yesterday. The group 1000 Friends of Florida advocates for protections of land and water, transportation, affordable housing, and local government. The group tracked various bills during the state legislative session. Paul Owens is the president of the nonprofit. One of the highlights of this year's session was that the passage of that bill to dedicate gambling revenues to land conservation and management, water quality protection, and community resilience. Policy and Planning Director Kim Dinkins also outlined what they feel were losses in the session. One of them was the passage of House Bill 1635. It would allow energy resource facilities in any commercial, industrial, or manufacturing land use or zoning. Under the preemption, large-scale fuel storage facilities, for example, could be located to residential areas or preschools. Inclusion of the commercial land use and zoning designated areas um, is concerning because, again, those can be schools or retail areas. Owens hopes to see better community planning bills in the next session. It really comes down to this. If we want to keep Florida special for future generations for our children and her grand- grandchildren, we really need to plan for it. For WMNF News, I'm Chris Young. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis announced last night that a plane with 14 Floridians was inbound from Haiti amid the ongoing gang violence. DeSantis says the flight was the first of what officials hope will be many flights to bring Floridians home who have been trying to evacuate Haiti. We are willing to dedicate the resources. We understand that this is important. We understand that there's people that um, are, are, are really in, in danger right now that, that, are, that are our fellow Floridian. Kevin Guthrie, director of Florida's Division of Emergency Management, said about 300 Florida residents have reached out for help as of yesterday morning. The state cabinet on Tuesday will consider a $122 million proposal to buy agricultural land in southwest Florida and allow the current owners to lease and manage the property. The purchase is tied to a statewide wildlife corridor. The state is going to pay $122 million to buy four parcels totaling 25,000 acres in what is known as the Caloosahatchee Big Cypress Corridor in Hendry and Collier Counties. The Department of Environmental Protection is authorized to purchase certain land, including the approximately 75,000 acre Caloosahatchee Big Cypress Corridor. A local agency has taken inventory of greenhouse gas emissions in the Tampa Bay area, quantifying how much our region contributes to climate change. The Tampa Bay Times reports the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council found that 31.7 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent were produced by Hillsborough, Pinellas, Pasco, and Hernando counties in 2021. Metro areas, states, and territories across the country have also filed these first-of-their-kind reports to the federal government. Roughly 45% of the region's emissions was energy costs. 43% were produced by all forms of transportation. Tampa Bay area's trees helped remove about 1.5 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Recommendations include adding more solar energy, incentivizing people to buy electric vehicles, and improving public transit as solutions. Highs today will be in the lower 80s, overnight lows in the mid-60s. I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa.